So let's talk about freedom and free will. If you can predict all these things, are we beyond the capacity to change? You know, we're in fact, when talking about global warming, we're talking about our collective free will as a society. Can we exert it to change things that we don't want to have happen? And can we, um, then can we predict what the results of our actions will be, both as individuals and as a society? So there's, um, uh, I, I would claim that the answer is in general, no, we can't predict that. Um, and this has to go with to these, these questions about, um, that I was mentioning before about um, Turing's halting problem you know, that, that says, and this is something everybody, it sounds like a, something that's very esoteric, but something everybody has experienced because it means, the halting problem basically means there's no way to debug a computer program in general. There can be no universal debugger because the very first thing you'd want this debugger to do is say, I type in something or I click on this, you know, will something happen at all? And you can't answer that question. There's no general way of answering that question. So when your computer crashes or when things go wrong, this is intrinsically built into the way that computers work. It's also intrinsically built into the way that societies and human beings work. So you know, the central experience of free will is that you know, I can't predict what I'm going to, going to do. Even on you know, very simple things, like you know, it's four o'clock in the afternoon, should I have caffeinated coffee or decaffeinated coffee? Well, you know, caffeine would be more exciting, but you know, decaf is safer. I'm not going to know what I'm going to decide until I actually make but the decision. But that's not true if he's right about what his friends on Facebook are doing. I didn't say, I didn't right? say that his wife might not be able to predict no, what no, he can do or his if, friends. <laughs> if his friends, if your friends are all having decaf at four, he's going to have decaf at four, right? Probably. I mean, but that's, that's the point. Well, and even more to the point, if we were to stick you into a brain scanner, the, the, the neuroscientists would know before you do what you're going to choose. That's right, but I would claim that that's actually, that's irrelevant to my sense of having free will. So, so yeah, some neuroscientists could stick some electrodes into my brain, or you could look at my Facebook page, or my wife could actually, because she knows me, would be able to know what I'm going to do. But that's different from me knowing what I'm going to do. Right. And I can't know what I'm going to do. You can take the same math that Turing used to prove the halting problem, apply it to you, you yourself, and say, can, or to me, and say, can I know what I'm going to do? when I'm making a decision? And the answer is no. I can't know what, I'm going to, what decision I'm going to make some very substantial fraction of the time. And you can take that, exactly that same mathematics and apply it to human societies or to economic systems and ask, is society capable of predicting what it's going to do? And the answer is no, it can't, not all the time, because of this endless kind of second guessing, essentially, that we, we all do with each other. But I hear, I hear him saying that we're close to the minority report here. <laughs> but instead of having those women in the bathtub, uh, whatever that was down there, you have Facebook and the, other, you, and the other kinds of predictive values of Twitter and the other social networks. And they can predict when he's going to murder someone. I mean, not literally. Well, when he's going to have I his. I don't have a Facebook page or a Twitter account. So <laughs> <laughs> he's off You're the out of luck, buddy. But it is, it is, this is predict in the Las Vegas sense. Las Vegas can make a lot of money because they know that you're going to do something 51% of the time. Um, and I, this is the way, you know, these companies are going to use this consumer information. It's a double zero on the roulette wheel. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? So you don't want to play roulette. It's the worst game in Las Vegas, and they know that, right? So, um, so, so it's not like we know exactly what you're going to do tomorrow, but we, we know uh, we can narrow the space enough that is very useful if we're trying to change your behavior, if we're trying to get you to buy something, if we're trying to change society's behavior, say, in a good way or in a way to make profits.